welcome to this very first episode of the Teacher Transition Podcast. In all of our episodes, we're going to be talking with former educators, former classroom teachers, and hearing how they went from the classroom to all of the amazing things that they did after that. And in this episode, I'm going to be sharing my story of how I went from teaching to everything I've done since going beyond the walls of my classroom. Maybe you are like me and you've always known that you've wanted to be a teacher. Both of my parents were teachers and it just came very, very naturally and I enjoyed it a lot. I taught elementary school and loved it for five years, but I taught for seven. And those last two years, I knew I needed to be doing something different. I wanted growth and development and to be learning more. I I just really felt like I had plateaued. I remember being at the end of year assembly, the last day of school, my fifth year, the end of the fifth year. And I remember a very distinct impression as they were giving the end of the year gifts to certain teachers who were not going to be there the following year for for whatever reasons, that these going away gifts. And I remember a very distinct impression of, you're not going to be here either, sinking into my heart. And I, it, it was so odd to me because I had no other plan to do anything else. This is what I'd done school for. This is what I'd done grad school for. I'd always planned on being a teacher, but I felt inside of myself like you're going to be doing something different. Anyway, I went that afternoon and I talked with my administrator and with the school counselor and with some other, like the vice principal. And I said, Hey, have you ever started to feel stagnant? And if so, what did you do when you started to feel stagnant? Because I knew for me personally, I, I needed more growth and development. And they all related. They said, yeah, definitely. We all feel like that. That's when I went and got certifications. Well, I had already done that. Another said, oh, that's when I started presenting at conferences. And I had already done that. And another said, well, that's when I signed up for my master's program. And I'd already done that. But that's as far as I had planned my career path. But I was still feeling very stagnant. And so I went on summer break and when summer break was over, I went back to school and that very first day of being back, I remember going up to the whiteboard, picking up the expo marker and writing on the board what the students were going to do when they came in. And I remember in my gut a feeling like that returning, but this time it was, you were just here. And I'd been gone all summer and done amazing adventures and things like that, but I didn't feel refreshed. And I learned through experience for two years what it's like to feel stagnant in the workplace and struggle with job satisfaction. When we look at the statistics, we see that every year over 200,000 teachers in the U.S. alone go from the classroom to doing something else. But where do they go? And what do they do? And are they happy doing it? I had no idea what to do next. And so I stayed. But the following year, I mixed it up. I went to a different school. I taught a different grade level. And it was a complete recipe for success on paper. I was going to be teaching at a school where a ton of my friends were, people I'd done my undergrad with, friends who lived in my neighborhood. The school had a lot more funding for some cool things that we could do. It was a beautiful, really new building. Everything just looked so, so, so good. And for a while, I was distracted from it for at least least a few weeks. And then as fall break rolled around, that feeling in my gut rolled around too and feeling like it was Groundhog's Day and that things were the same and I was dealing with the same behavior things and this, that, and the other. I felt like I was repeating myself. I just really felt stagnant again. Over the winter holiday break, I really felt like, I don't know if I can make it to the end of the year. My team teacher, who was so fantastic, it was her first year of teaching and she was pregnant with twins. And I knew I just couldn't leave her in those circumstances. And I stayed. 
when we look at the statistics of people who have low job satisfaction, they are twice as likely to experience depression. It's really not just a, a work thing. Your career well-being, as the Gallup Poll Group calls it, is one of the most important areas for life well-being and just, just doing well in life. And they also have reported that it is the one that is esteemed lowest or it's the one that people overlook the most out of all the areas of how well a person's doing. Not looking after how you're enjoying your work life is one of the biggest detriments to your personal well-being. So as anyone in life, regardless of what a person struggles with, maybe, maybe one of the hardest things that you've experienced is the passing of a loved one. Maybe one of the hardest things that you've experienced is, is divorce. Or maybe one of the hardest things that you've dealt with is, is something with maybe, maybe a child that you have. Whenever we experience something hard, we want so sincerely for other people who've experienced something similar to that to have a better experience, to, to be comforted and to be helped when they're going through that. That is exactly why a handful of years after going from the classroom to everything I did next, that's why I've created Teacher Transition. Our whole goal is to help teachers who are going from the classroom to their next thing to have a smooth, comfortable, and confident transition process. So what did I do next? Well, at the end of that seventh year, there was one position in my district that I was interested in, but there were so many applicants to it. The district where I taught had thousands of teachers. It's not one of these small districts. It's just a couple schools. It has a lot of high schools, a lot of middle schools, a lot of elementary schools. And did I want that position? Oh, I wanted it so badly. And it didn't pan out. But closed doors lead us to other doors. And so I submitted my resignation paper and I continued into the future. On the resignation paper, I actually put, you know, I'm applying for this position at the district. I expressed a lot of gratitude to my administrator and to the district of, you guys have provided me with growth opportunities for a long time. I'm continuing to seek growth opportunities. And so I'm applying to this position at the district. And if that doesn't work out, I'm going to seek growth opportunities in other ways. So I, I wrapped up that school year, but before that school year wrapped up, I was already presenting at some educational technology conferences at multiple of them. And while I was presenting at one ed tech conference, not just on the ed tech I was using, but how I was using it in some really innovative ways with some other ed tech, one of the companies whose resources I was presenting on, they were actually attending that conference. And so as they saw me present on their materials and resources and some strategies I was using, they approached me and they said, Hey, we would love to talk with you after if you'd have any interest in doing some training for us out here so that we don't have to fly people all the way across the country to train in that region. And I told them I'd be happy to, happy to talk because I was, that was going to be my concluding year. And they were stoked, stoked about the fact that I was going to be available full-time. That led to my first work opportunities with training. Now, I hope for the teachers out there that you can see it wasn't something I did after I got out of teaching. We're going to show you how to capitalize on what you're doing as a teacher and while you're teaching and what you love to help you find your next dream job and to be able to land it. So I first went into ed tech training. I became an educational consultant. I traveled for uh, how many, I don't know how many hundreds of miles of radiuses of a radius in my area and, and loved training administrators, district leaders, instructional coaches, teachers, and others on some really, really, really cool stuff. Some of my favorite stuff. It was really great. And I could tell I still wanted to expand my skill set and be able to contribute in some new ways. I became an adjunct faculty member at a university. I loved that. And I could still see that some of the patterns I was experiencing as a teacher 
where I felt like I was repeating myself and I wish I could record some things. And really, I wanted the learners to be able to be anyone, anywhere, anytime. So I started working at an instructional design agency. And that is a place where we made learning materials and resources for large companies. Some of what we made were resources for live instruction. Other things that we made were resources for online learning that people could do, yeah, on demand at their own schedule and leisure. So I loved that. It was so much learning. Working in an agency is like drinking from a fire hydrant, but I had been so thirsty for so long in my classroom that it was really, really refreshing to me. So I worked there, really loved it, got to lead out and help create projects and resources for large companies. That agency makes things for companies like Nike, Deloitte. HP, large medical companies, and others. And I really expanded my skill set and so much more. It, it was great. Fun coworkers, awesome atmosphere in, in a lot of ways. Very new, very refreshing. And after that, I had two work opportunities I had to choose between. One would be training educators throughout the United States on how to use certain educational resources. It would be a lot of travel. It would be a lot of variety, a lot of people, really cool in a lot of ways. The other opportunity was doing more things along the lines of instructional design, a learning strategist, project management, and, and so much more. And so I weighed out these two opportunities very strategically, but I also had to make that decision that week those opportunities presented themselves at the exact same time. And I chose to go with the opportunity to make the online learning materials. Now, did I love training teachers? Absolutely. I could see that the travel would have been kind of wearing on me, but exciting, right? Really cool. But I also felt like I already had that skill set because I did. And I wanted to be able to expand my skill set in some new ways and really the content that I would have been working with at that other company is stuff I'd always been passionate about and always been curious about what can I do with this? So I took that opportunity. It was amazing. I started out as an instructional designer and then it grew into more kind of learning strategist and, and project manager and orchestrating a team to create online learning materials and live instruction resources for youth and for adults that was distributed globally in a lot of languages. So exciting. And to say I absolutely loved it would be a complete understatement. I really loved that. So after that, I then went independent. I became my own company advising clients in ways similar to what I was doing at that company, um, but for my own business. I advised companies that are educational companies like Franklin Covey's Leader in Me program. I advised large clients and companies that train people and that deal with HR topics and, and so many others. And I really enjoyed, really enjoyed doing that. That eventually grew into an agency and we create learning materials and resources for large companies. So in that role, I have instructional designers. I have people that make learning videos, people that do a lot of techie stuff. And, and as a team, we create what our clients need for, for their audience and, and who they serve. If it's teachers or if it's customers or if it's new hires that they need to train or so much. So, so many other things. So I've, I've loved the variety that's come in my path. While doing all of this, I still do educational consulting. I still represent certain um, educational curriculum companies in my region and help schools get access to their resources and training on them. But really, my, someone asked me the other day, how does your life look differently now than when you were a teacher? Now, for everyone, their personal path is, is personal and it's different. But for me, it was so clear that I needed to be doing something different. And I would say the biggest thing to describe 
the difference in my path now and and then is is peace. I I it's so nice to just continue progressing and and everyone has a different personality. Some people like a steeper hill to climb or a different trajectory. Uh, but life has different seasons and and it's so great to allow the coming seasons to come and to go forward with them. So that is my story of of what I did after teaching. Now I know there are so many specifics. Sometimes when people tell you what they're what they do for work and how they got it, it's just this glazed over easy story. But when you're in the trenches of knowing you need to be doing something different, but not knowing what to do or how to do it, that's not an easy place to be. There's so much that we could talk about with letters of resignation and how do you figure out what you want to do next? How do you identify opportunities to do that? How do you have an excellent resume and cover letter and so much more? We'll dive into the details of all of those things on the podcast and in other resources that we have on our website, teachertransition.com. But for now, just know that I'm cheering you on with the amazing things that you're doing in the classroom and all of our teachers that are doing amazing things beyond the classroom as well. So thanks for joining us for this first episode. If you know other teachers who've gone beyond the classroom and would love to share their story, we would love to get in touch with them. If you know teachers who are considering other things and who aren't sure how to take those next steps, we would love to be of support. Have them go to our website. They can find free downloads like the top 10 jobs for teachers once they're transitioning from the classroom and so much more. Okay. Thanks again for joining us and I'll see you in the next episode of Teacher Transition. 